You know what? She is the woman by the Illinois governor's side here. And while Patty Blagojevich doesn't face charges, wiretaps show she shares a governor's combative and sometimes crude verbal style. I think we're beating up on her a little bit. Who hasn't said something bad on the telephone? But anyway, let's move on and watch CNN's Gary Tuckman's report. Congratulations. Happier times for the Blagojevich family when they had their second child in 2003. I think she takes after her daddy. She wanted to stay close to her mother. <laughs> Both she and I love Patty so much, we always like to be close. Now, news helicopters hover over Patty Blagojevich's home that she shares with her husband and two daughters, who are seen going to the car with their mother following behind. Patricia Blagojevich, a woman who, if prosecutors are right, stands by her man in an unflattering and sometimes foul-mouthed style. Regarding the accusation that her husband wanted the Chicago Tribune to fire editorial writers and return for state help for the company to sell Wrigley Field, home of the Chicago Cubs, the wiretapper say she said, hold up that bleeping Cubs bleep, bleep them. And did she endorse the plot to get rid of the newspaper employees? Patty Blagojevich, who has been in the real estate business, is allegedly caught dishing this, just fire the writers. And she and her husband are alleged to have schemed to get her high-paying positions on corporate boards. The public has seen a much different Patty Blagojevich. This when she was asked her baby daughter's middle name. We just do an initial with a last name like Blagojevich. You don't really need a middle name. This is not a frilly first lady. Carol Maureen is a political columnist for the Chicago Sun-Times and the political editor for Chicago's WMAQ-TV, a longtime observer of Illinois' often corrupt political scene. She herself has come under investigation by the U.S. Attorney's Office because some of her real estate deals uh, were done in concert with the governor's fundraiser who now sits in a federal prison on corruption charges. Patty Blagojevich is from a political blue blood family. Her sister Deborah Mell will be sworn in as a new state representative next month. But it's her father who's exceptionally well known in Chicago politics. Richard Mell has been a city alderman, the equivalent of a councilman, for 33 years. Mell has had a falling out with his son-in-law, the governor. This is a family at war uh, for reasons that are hard to completely understand, but the father-in-law is a power broker and the son-in-law, Blagojevich, became the governor. And so when that business splintered, it was, um, I mean, Thanksgiving's a bad holiday for the Blagojevich Mells. We wanted to talk to Richard Mell about his daughter and son-in-law. He would not go on camera, but gave us this statement. My main concern right now is for my daughter and grandchildren. I would rather not discuss this sad situation in the public venue at this time. And sad it is. Patty and Rod Blagojevich's little girls will now have to compete for the attention of their parents with their father about to enter a legal maelstrom. Things have changed since this pitifully ironic statement when the governor talked about his newborn. She's happy, contented, very straightforward, very honest, which means no political career. <laughs> Gary Tuckman, CNN, Chicago. All right. So my producer yelled at me for editorializing, but I still feel the same way. That is a pressure cooker to be in, to grow up in a family like that and be in the spotlight. So let's cut her some slack just a little bit, guys. Okay, Patty Blagojevich is standing by her husband's side, but there are a whole lot of people standing by, you know, against him, I should say, chief among them. U.S. Attorney Patrick Fitzgerald, a very high-profile prosecutor, now tackling what could be his most high-profile case. Joel Levin worked directly with Fitzgerald in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago for seven years, and if anyone can tell us more about Pat Fitzgerald, it is him. Okay, so you worked with him, and this guy, like, he is no, he takes no prisoners. We know that. Came to Chicago to root out uh, corruption in Illinois. What, did you like him as a person to work for him? Yes, uh, I did, Don. Uh, Pat was a great guy to work for. Um, he's the kind of guy that uh, provide, provided very meaningful input and guidance in cases. Um, and he knows the job because he's done the job as a line prosecutor. Um, but he's also, he's a personable guy. I mean, he cares about the people in the office. Um, he walk around the office, yeah. you know, poke his, head, poke his head in people's offices to see how they're doing. And it's not just the high profile cases that he was concerned about. It was really all the cases in the office. He is personable. So but yeah, I'd say he was a great guy to work for. Personable, but he is focused. He keeps it very close to the vest. I remember every reporter trying to get some information, trying to get uh, find out about Patrick Fitzgerald. Who is he dating? What's he like? What does he do? Where does he eat? It's just anything, nothing, Mr. Levin. Well, you know, Pat is a private person. He obviously 
He's not a one-dimensional person. Uh, he's not just the person that you see in the press conferences. But he does uh, want to keep his private life, you know, private and personal. And people in the office respect that. But um, he does do other things other than work. Um, he enjoys a very full uh, private and personal life. Yeah, and recently married, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. And here's a funny thing. Name one of People Magazine's sexiest men of 2005. <laughs> you got to laugh at that. He, he's, ta he's, he's, taken some, he's taken some ribbing about that over the years. I guess power is sexy. Okay. So let's move on and talk about him uh, as a prosecutor. As I said in, from the very beginning, he wants to root out corruption in Illinois and Chicago. Might he use uh, Governor Rob Blagojevich as an example? Might he use him to take other people down, all those corrupt politicians that he wants to go after in Chicago? Well, you know, where this case is going to lead, I think, is, is somewhat uncertain. I, I have every reason to believe that Pat and the team of prosecutors who are handling this case are going to handle it just like they've handled every other case um, that the office has handled involving political corruption. Um, I suspect that they're out there today and will be in the coming months interviewing, following up on leads, and they will take the case wherever the evidence leads. Um, Pat is a relentless uh, investigator. Um, he's working with a very talented group of people over there. Okay. And I am sure... Real quickly. I'm sure they're going, they're going to take it as far as they can take okay, it. Okay, if you have one moment, and I really, I only have like 10, 15 seconds here. One thing that you remember about him most working with him, his work ethic, personally, whatever, tell us. Well, as I said, I think Pat is, is the complete package. He's a very hard worker, uh, but he's also a person who cares about people, who works well with people, and who was just an ideal uh, boss to work for. All right. Thank you very much for that. Joel Levin, the former federal prosecutor, he worked with Patrick Fitzgerald. We appreciate the insight. We haven't learned that much about him um, here, I don't believe. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so listen, we are taking uh, your responses here today in the CNN newsroom. We have been asking you to log on to Twitter, MySpace, Facebook, I report. Uh, these are, I want to get to, if I can, some of the MySpace ones later. Let's see what it is. Bopat Law. This is Twitter. Yeah, we'll get to Twitter then. Um, we need to care when we stop caring about our elected leadership we get the kind of results we're seeing in Illinois. So I guess, you know, we were asking people what they thought about this. Our democratic process had taken one step forward, now two steps back. That's some negativity. And then one person, Punky Pixie, I like that name, that's pretty cool, says, I am happy to, I'm happy that BOA caved and gave money to those workers in Chicago. Finally, the people win over the corporations, and there are several more. Thank you so much for logging on. Uh, make sure you go to Twitter. Um, MySpace, I report, which is this camera right here, iReport.com, uh, Facebook, or what have you, and send us your responses. We'll get them on the air. Uh, as a matter of fact, there they are, some of them scrolling right at the bottom of your screen.